This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and it's Smackdown time. We have the new Dell XPS 13 2 in 1, the convertible model, versus the incumbent, the HP Spectre X360, latest generation with Intel KB Lake, and some versions of that Spectre that have been released since we last review it. We're going to compare them now. All right, first three main points. For those who are too long, didn't watch, you want to hear those up front. Price difference, the HP is less expensive. The Dell XPS 13 2-in-1 is $100 more than the non-2-in-1 model. It's already a pricey piece there. So if you're talking about price, you can get a pretty nicely configured HP Spectre X360 for $12.99. Core i7, that's a full core i7, 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 gig SSD. That's the no pen model, that's a 1080p display. For Dell, you're looking at $17.99 to get a similar configuration, except for their Core i7 is actually the Core i7Y CPU, which is like a Core M. That leads into the second point. The Spectre X360 comes with your usual dual core 15 watt Ultrabook CPUs. These are both 7th generation Intel KB Lake machines, but you're getting your standard amount of computing horsepower that you would find in any competing Ultrabook, be it the Yoga 710, 910, Dell's own XPS 13 non 2 in 1 model. And Dell uses the Intel Core i5 and i7Y CPU, which is Intel's new name for the Core M. They're trying to like hide and remarket that Core M. That's a 4.5 watt dual core CPU, so it has less computational skills. Now, the Dell does pretty good when it's plugged in, and synthetic benchmarks will look really good because it can go from a fairly low 1.3 gigahertz clock speed up to a pretty high turbo boost for really, really short periods of time. But for intensive long work, say you're, you're spending some quality time in Adobe Lightroom, you're compiling code, that sort of thing, the HP Spectre X360 is going to be the better pick there. Likewise, if you're looking for something that has enough horsepower to be good for three or four years going out, I would certainly always pick the more powerful CPU. The pen canoodle. For those of you who like a pen, and that's an attractive thing to have an active digitizer on a convertible so you can take notes or do artwork. The Dell XPS 13 2-in-1, no matter which model configuration you pick, it's going to support an active pen, and that's the Wacom AES pen. It's sold separately for $50, but the XPS 13 2-in-1 models just all configurations support the pen. When HP first released this latest refresh of the HP Spectre X360 with Intel KB Lake and the new narrower bezels, the first model, the one that we reviewed, had no pen support. It's not even that the pen wasn't in the box, just pens don't work. There's no digitizer hardware for it. Now they have added models that support the pen. That's typically about $200 more. It's still going to come in cheaper than the XPS 13 2-in-1, but it does cost you more money. Likewise, when it comes to 4K displays, these are both available with 1080p full HD displays, and at first the Spectre was only available at that resolution. Now they have a 4K model. Dell has both the 1080p and a QHD Plus display, 3200 by 1800. So not quite 4K, but they're both very high resolution. That's not so much to worry about. Now on to the further details. HP has more ports and they're not like miniaturized so much as Dell had, had to do to make their little skinny laptop that, well, skinny. So HP has two Thunderbolt 3 slash USB-C ports. They both support Thunderbolt 3. It has one full-size USB-A port, so you don't have to go running around looking for an adapter just so you can plug in your USB peripherals, the existing normal ones that you have around the house. Headphone jack, of course, on there as well. Now, Dell has a Thunderbolt 3 port. It has a USB-C port, and it has a headphone jack, of course. And there's a micro SD card slot. So you don't get that USB-A port, and only one of the two ports supports Thunderbolt 3, for those of you who are really into that faster standard. Now, when it comes to portability, uh, there's a charm for the XPS 13 2-in-1, just like there is for the XPS 13. It has the footprint more of a 12-inch laptop. I mean, the thing is tiny, and that no-bezel design looks really good on it. The HP Spectre X360 has a pretty much average footprint for a 13-inch laptop, and it has mm, almost not their bezels on the sides, but there's on top and bottom it has bezels. And then the top, the upside is the webcam is up top on the HP Spectre X360, the Dell XPS line. They had to put it down at the bottom so they could have no bezel at the top. So you got yourself a chin cam. Yes, you can turn it upside down and have the webcam then not be aiming at your chin. But for those of us who, you know, when we're having a Skype business meeting and we maybe just want to type an email in the background at the same time, turning it upside down isn't always ideal when you're video conferencing. 
both have a Windows Hello IR camera for facial recognition login. It's not enabled yet on the XPS 13 2-in-1. They're going to have a downloadable software update in the coming months to enable it. I don't know what's taking time there, but eventually it's going to have it. The HP has one out of the box and it is enabled. Of course, Dell also throws in a fingerprint scanner for a plus, so you do have a way of logging in without typing in your password. In the meantime, HP doesn't have a fingerprint scanner. The weight's pretty close. 2.7 pounds for the Dell, 2.9 pounds for the HP. That's you're talking, I don't think most people could really, really feel the difference there. Last up is battery life. You would think that the Dell would win hands down here because it has the less power consuming CPU and integrated graphics type inside, but no. Actually, the HP Spectre X360 typically outlasts our Dell. Both of these are 1080p models by one to two hours or so. Now, they're both pretty good. I mean, the Dell can go about up to eight hours if you're doing it for light to moderate work and 50% brightness. But the HP Spectre lasts even longer. Both of these are American companies. Both of these have online driver downloads. Pretty easy to update your laptop. They have automatic updaters that go out and find the updates for you. And usually they're pretty solid. The HP Spectre X360 has a, an ongoing bug even from previous generations where it may actually lose some battery charge even when it's completely turned off. Ours did that. Now it's about 5% a day. If you use your laptop daily, it's not a deal breaker, but it could happen to you. It's more a problem for folks like us who have a lot of laptops in-house coming and going for review and they might sit there for five days and then you wonder where that battery charge went to if you left it sitting for five days at a time. Most people use their laptop every day. Still, it would be good if HP could figure that problem out. Haven't seen a problem like that on the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. Did notice it using more power than it should for connected standby, but connected standby is just kind of the devil in the details for many laptops right now because of the fact that it turns on the wireless connection even when it's asleep to check to see if anything's going on online, you know, download email, that sort of thing. So there you have it, the HP Spectre X360 or the Dell XPS 13 2-in-1. I mean, they're both really nice laptops. They're both expensive laptops. They're both convertible laptops with Intel KB like 7th generation CPUs. But as you can see, the HP Spectre X360 is the smarter one. It has a faster, higher wattage CPU, whereas the Dell's a little hobbled in that respect. The Dell wins back some points for having that smaller footprint, which is really nice. I mean, it makes it look very attractive and interesting. Of course, the Spectre is pretty too. And the Spectre comes in a bunch of different variants that are different model numbers. Makes it a little bit more confusing versus the Dell. Say you want the pen feature, you want the 4K. They're all different model numbers right now. But nonetheless, the HP still comes in as the less expensive one. If it was me going out there and shopping, I wouldn't mind having either of them. But for my bucks, I think I would go with the HP Spectre X360 just because it's less money and it's faster. And those are important features to me or important characteristics. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to watch our video reviews of each of those laptops. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos. And thumbs up if you like this video.